ordinary person to communicate his message to the people. It could be any one of you. Never see yourself as unworthy. Everyone is called to preach, to share the word of God. It doesn't mean only if you're a pastor, you're called to share. Every one of us, you know, we are called to declare, hmm. share the gospel, to preach, to teach, to share. Such a way the Lord will change their hearts, will break their hearts. You know, the hardened hearts will be broken. Yeah, Not just go with the message and preach. Prepare yourself, really prepare yourself with the word. Speak, speak a lot. I don't hear you speak in the spirit, you know. So speak, prepare yourself, really prepare yourself. Share what God says. Give assurance. We are just vessels, we are just shepherds, we are just co-workers along with the Lord. You know, nothing more than that. We are just vessels that the Lord gives. Uh, one sister came and spoke to me this morning. She was talking to me about what if uh, the person goes to Bible school, I think I spoke to some too, first lesson, and goes to Bible school and then he gets himself ordained. So she asked me what do I think. Uh, personally, as we all know, there are five officers. What are the five officers? Pastoral, uh, apostle, apostles, prophets, yeah, and teachers. These five offices have to be by the call of the Lord. You see, when the Lord calls you, then you will receive confirmation. Treating symptoms and simply comforting people, or do you really offer them a cure by treating? The problem. I told him that if I pray, God will answer my prayer. But the prayer will not be effective if you both don't identify your weakness and start working on your weakness. Mm. I told the lady, you stop doing what your husband is complaining of. And I told the husband, you stop doing what your wife is complaining of. And see in the next few weeks if there will be no improvement. So I counseled them with the word of God and I also corrected them in love. And just last week, they, I saw the man in the church and he said, Pastor, thank you very much. And my wife said, I should greet you specially because they were, she was satisfied of what I told them, the others I gave them that day. So, treating the problem is more preferable, is where the solution lies. Because we can try to use scripture and not tell the people their weakness in counseling. But when telling them their weakness, we tell them in law yes. and encourage them to work on it and see if there will be no result. Yes. So, with that, I was able to deal with that problem by counseling them with the word of God. And also telling them their weakness in love in order for them to work on it. And there was a result. Amen. Very good. It is not an easy to speak to them the word of God. But first I will ask, are you willing to listen, to sit down with me? And I will ask if we can we pray first. Then, then I will ask what is the problem, how that one we start. And if the person is saying to me, I will ask the person that, are you willing to listen even that this will be painful for you to mm. accept it? Mm. What I will say, oh, we just want to have a company to sit down where you tears wipe your crying. Mm. If you say to me yes, then I will say that what is the need to do, what the challenge is. But if the person is a believer, I will ask the person, you are a child of God? You know the word of God? Where is the lacking of your prayer? Have you still doing to go to your comfort zone? To your to your private room? To your prayer room? Mm -hmm. If you say to me yes, I will ask again, you can you can lie to me. But to yourself, you cannot lie and to our God as your maker that you serve. Because 
However, that I will say to you, even I say to you the word of God, but if you cannot accept it, you can say the truth, it will be, nothing will happen. The Holy Spirit, you will not come to us. So I always ask the, that things to the person because I know that if I say it to just to embrace you, it's nothing will be happen. Yeah. It'd be better to speak to you in pain that you will see to yourself and find the solution. Yes. Amen. Very good. Anyone else? And get into a right position of wanting to give the solution. But sometimes you see, you have to be more comforting to a person and go deep dive in their problems or the, the challenges. I mean, let's be very honest. Everybody knows with them whether they are making a mistake, right? Yes. And if you were just to go and say, hey, you're making a mistake, or you know, at the end of the day, this is what you should know, how are you doing? And that's going to put off a person. But reasoning, um, I believe as a rightful counselor, you need to have a high degree of wisdom to put yourself in the right position. And pastor, you need to have the balance of both. You need to know when to comfort them because it depends on the situation. If the person is going through a heartbreak, if the person is going through a marital problem or a relationship problem, or it could be even the uh, a, a pass away of their loved ones, you have to be comforting. You cannot be going and telling them and saying, you got to hear, this is the truth, you know, and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, they know the truth. They know that is the... The, that's the solution for their problem, but they need somebody to hear. I think many of us, as the time, uh, we, we tend to be more Christians than trying to really listen to what people have to say. But along the way, once you have really built that position of comfort, then that person will open up and will be more accepting and able to relate what is the problem, how to solve that. And that is where you or I mean you and I will have to switch our heads from a friend to a coach. And that's very important. Most of the time we tend to just solve the problem. Oh, you are here, let me solve this problem. Oh, okay, you got a marital problem, baby don't know. Let's look at it. Is it your husband's a problem or you are the problem? You fix it, you fix that. Yes, that's a math equation, but it doesn't happen all the time. Because at the end of the day the human factor, the empathy is so important. Until the person is able to say, hey, you know what, I know actually what's my problem, but I just needed somebody to hear. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone? Yeah. These symptoms and simply comforting people and on the other side, have to offer them a few flares by treating problem. It both, it both works in my experience depends on the cases or situation. Because I come across with the believers, with side congregation, I come across also with outsiders who really come to like Hindus. You know, I can say they are hungry for the word of God. And I come across especially on patient, you know, the, the patient. So when the people are sick, even the family, most of them are all right. All are affected in a family. So most of them, all of them are depressed, hopeless. So in this case, you have to divert their mind back to the world, yes. to the world of God. Yes. Because any doctor's decision on all those surgeons cannot do it. Yes. So we have to divert all of their minds back to the world. Yes. So that's why I can say that it all works, depends on the cases. Yes. So for them, because they are hungry of the world, you have to divert them back to the world of God. Because it doesn't work if they go to Australia, Singapore to find the good surgeons and they cannot come back anymore. No, they pass away there. I have so many cases on this. So you have to, you have the opportunity to share. Yes, so that's why I can see it depends on the case and situation. So in the congregation, we cannot just also simply pamper them, especially if you know them like 10 years ago already there. So we have to speak boldly. Yes. You know, because you're attending, you know, not three yes. times a week, two twice a week. It's not a pampering garden. Yes. You know, we are accountable. 
So it depends on the situation and cases. So both apply. Because some people, they know how to solve their problem. It's just that they are seeking out for comfort and then they need some encouragement and motivation. So that is number one. Number two, some people, they, they will go blank. They don't know what to do. That is where you start listening to them. And in order for us to get the solution, we need to know what is the root cause of it. Without knowing the root cause, you can't treat that person. So basically, you have to listen to them and then dive deep to get the reason why, 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 until the root cause is being found. Yes. So that is number two. Um, for me, like whether I'm like talking to non-believer or believer, if it is a believer, it will be easy for me to quote some verses to encourage them or Bible stories which I can use as a lesson to tell them. Um, it will be easy, but if it is a non-believer, I will still use some of the verses and also stories from the Bible, but they won't know until I build some comfortable relationship with them. You know, after that, you know, when they are very comfortable with me, then slowly I will tell, oh, you know, in the Bible, you know, that's how I fool him. So I think it is important to have both approach. Uh, this. I can share that this testimony that I'm considering my boss about this will take so long. So for me, first for so long I was comforting him uh, here. Then we become comfortable, then I found the cure. So suddenly she's telling me something about she's sick, blah, 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 blah. Because then I find the cure, then I, 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 she told me that in times her husband is always not around, she can see. So that way, I find a cure that the reason why she's always sick because she's homes, uh, no, uh, feel uh, uh, lonely. So for me, it's both. It's that I 